Good morning, Fenlanders. Oh, hang on. Good afternoon. Just gone 12 o'clock. Here we are, another day, another dollar. Welcome to our channel. This is Fenland Farming Adventures. Hope you enjoy it. Today, we are going to try and get two little tractors in the shed. Pipe first on the forklift is still not here, so we've um, glued it back together so we can just fill it up with antifreeze and put it in the um, put it in the potato store where it'll be nice and warm. Two little tractors out. Get the drill out so I can get past if I can get it past the alley. Basically, we come to a bit of a standstill with that. Kitty's taking the head. I'll drop the other two pistons out. Two pistons um, later tonight, um, and then get the, the pistons over to Kitty for cleaning. You can see the board's not too bad. Tonight, I'm going to have to make a list of bits I need for it. Um, and then go from there really. Kitty's gonna clean the pistons, we could get a head gasket ordered and a, and a water pump rebuild kit and a oil pump rebuild kit for it, I think it's worth it. So oil pressure gauge, water temperature gauge, a couple of little hoses and stuff like that. Try and find some orange Samco hoses for it. That'd be kind of cool. The only new bits on the thing. And a carb rebuild kit as well, cause that's pretty gross. First, we're gonna go just do a little bit of roundup in. Uh, a bit frosty this morning, but that's soon worn off. And we're gonna go and get the sprayer out. Go and check the sprayer over. Glorious day out here, as you can see. Yeah, just seeing other sprayers flying around, and uh, yeah, apparently you can get a good kill with a frosty night. So, as long as the leaf are all dried out now, so that's good. So yeah, we'll get the drill out. So that's um, I can easily then go. I want to go drilling, and off we go. Let's go and get the sprayer fired up. Drinks bottle, camera kit. All the good stuff a good farmer needs these days. Got the combine fired up the other day. Sorry, I didn't take the GoPro with me. Um, I did have a few phone calls saying what the moisture, asking what the moisture was, while I was driving it back to the yard. Because they are Mickey takers around here. Such is life having a family like that. They all think they're clever. We bought a new bucket the other day as well, um, like a grab bucket, but it's got Manitou brackets on it. Um, don't know why we bought it really, Dad bought it, so thinks he wants to use it for something, so that's what we'll do. <clears throat> I did check the oil and stuff over on the, uh, on said sprayer the other day, so that was all good. I will check it again, because it ain't been used for a while, so. Da, 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 da. Yeah, a bit of a normal boring farming day today. Started making my cages to go make some piles as well. I'll show you them. Get my good friend Shane to come and help me do that. If anyone needs a digger hire in the East Anglia area, Shane is your man, Shane White. He's gonna come and help me dig some holes and put some frames in the ground. Yeah, I made these look. Ta -da. Just a steel reinforcing frame. To go in the ground. Hope my little digger can uh, pile through it. See, so yeah, I got the combine back. She eventually fired up. It's got like flat spots on the tires where it's been sat for a while, so nice to get that. We give it a run, and this is the panel that Grand Grumpy Grandad cleaned. I think we're going to uh, try and get some UTV uh, people out to do some lights and stuff for us, so that'd be kind of cool. Get that all kitted out with some fancy dance new lights on it. I can see it. I just can't reach it. There we go. Yeah, it needs a change. It needs a change. I messaged my fi filter man now and uh, get some ordered. It's going to take a little warming up this is because it's been in here for a while. So hopefully we ain't got no problems where it just might have got a bit cold in the in said shed. And we're going to get the RTK on it as well because that's not on it. Oh, we're in. Spraying, I'm spraying. Uh, finally, now once me uh, the hand throttle decided it was going to uh, stop working, F15's flying over. And then all of my nozzles decided they were all blocked up with hardly anything. So uh, just been out there cleaning my nozzles out. I filled up. Um, yeah, and then we're out putting some Roundup on. Um, I think I'd like to try and um, direct drill this in, but it ain't gonna happen. It's too hard. I know it's frozen this morning, but 
everything seems too too firm really to do it. I need to get rid of the compaction before I try and do anything to these fields, I think. I think the sprayer is uh, next on my list when I get some money to uh, replace. Um, it's got a little, all, all its little foibles and stuff, um, but still works. Just uh, I'm getting bored of fixing it. So I don't know what's happened to the uh, joystick, but that seems as though it's got cold and only works in flat out and stop. So uh, that's interesting. Other than that, we're all good. We're up here and spraying. Perfect day. Travelling was okay, but now it's got a bit. I should have gone earlier. Cookie said go, so. Um, well, he didn't say go. I just see other people going and uh, and thought, ah, oh, if they're going, then I don't see why I can't be going. And um, yeah, travelling while it's frozen is a pretty good idea. All working well now. Nice to just kick back and relax. I made a little mount for me GoPro as well because <laughs> uh, that still needs a bit more of a twist in it. But um, that's on there, so you lot can see me waffling on while I'm travelling up and down. But yeah, nozzles seem to be blocking up as quick as anything. Um, so I'm wondering if I need to have a good flush out. Yeah, a good little flush out. When I'm finished the uh, round up, and I put um, I put a load of water in and uh, and uh, flush it out and uh, give all the nozzles a good clean. Something I can do while it's daylight, unless they're just freezing up a little bit. I mean, it's quite cold out there, but. It is thawing out, so it must be must be warmer than freezing. Only only a little bit, but yeah. I think what I'm going to do on the drill is try and get someone to make me a packer roller, so I can go through with the Grange toolbar, remove the cultivating discs on the on the um, thermostat, and um, and put a packer roller in there, so it flattens it all down nicely. I can drill without moving too much soil around. I like the idea of that, I think. There we go, come on, on or off. The boom seems to lift up. Every time I turn the master on and off, it lifts up. So I catch it and then it decides, no, no, no I'm gonna carry on going up. So just want it to stay where I've left it. Uh, you learn every day, but Sometimes I learn new things about this sprayer all the time, so at least the sat down's working because that was disengaging for some weird reason. Yeah, the, the whole idea, my, my philosophy, uh, and everybody else might have a different philosophy completely, but I don't want to move too much soil, but I need to break the compaction up. I said to Dad, I want a drill that I can go in and drill through rough stuff, horrible, trashy, rough stuff, break the compaction up, not move too much soil. Hey, there we go, see? Uh, hand throttle's either on or off. It's an electrical fault with that somewhere along the line. <laughs> the uh, It doesn't know whether it wants to be flat out or not. So I've got it halfway at the minute and we're doing 1700 revs. i got a service kit for it anyway, I'm gonna service it. Hopefully the filter will be here tomorrow and I'll put some fresh oil and filter and diesel filter on it tomorrow. And then it's due its, um, it's due its uh, NSTS test anyway, so that's due next month. So we'll get get that booked in and get all the work done on it. I shouldn't have too much more spraying to do. I know I've got some pre emming to do, but. <sighs> Come on, sprayer. Let's all just be friends. I've only got like six or eight hectares left to do, and then I'm done, so. Nothing too major, but you spend longer cleaning your nozzles out than you do doing some actual work. Yeah, I'm an, I'm an hour late really. Travelling would have been better when it was frozen. It's determined to kill itself, this sprayer, isn't it? Really is uh, properly determined. So we're revving normally now. So uh, yeah, I'll get on the phone and uh, get them to sort that. It might be a switch in the armrest, it might be a fuse, it might be a relay, it might be anything. So, when my man comes out and does a test on it. But what a beautiful day, I love beautiful days like this. No rain, nice and firm ground, mud is frozen, sun is shining, perfect working day. Alright, it's a bit cold, but 
I can put up with that, no worries. Need to clean the windows on this thing again as well. Lots of birds around anyway, they're loving the mustard. So that was the only pheasant cover we had was the mustard. And uh, alright, the sheep have eaten what they could out of it. It's determined to kill itself, this thing. I wonder if I uh, go into the um, message centre, diagnostics, clear all the codes I've got on there, whether that helps. New codes on there, we'll have a look. Back in a minute, I just got, I've got one more, one nozzle to clean out, so uh, I'll go and do that. Alright, we're off again. One unblocked nozzle. Take it nice and steady, as slow as I dare. Sprayer is pretty determined to try and uh, rip its own booms off itself, so it keeps going like mad and then cutting out on me, and then going like mad and cutting out on me, so it's not overly great for the boom. You hear it, if you lot can hear it. There we go. All the nozzles clean again. Happy days. Hey! So we're going, we're half throttle now and we're flat out, so it's obviously getting worse. Of course, every time it stops, the booms come forward like this and then go back again. If it weren't bad enough, Let's see if we can get this other field done. One more field to go, one more field to go. See if we can get it done and then, um, then we're going to see what Grumpy Grandad's doing. So I'm going to sign out here and curse at my sprayer some more for a little bit and um, and then like I say, have one more field done and then give it a little wash out, a little clean out and uh, make sure there's no residue in the uh, spray lines and um, and then we'll go and start getting the shed tidied out. Cheers guys. Right. Good evening. It's now evening. Have me tea. Come out for a bit. Seems I didn't get nothing else done tonight. The heater is going on. So, hopefully you lot can hear me. Heater is well and truly on. I have got a pipe to put on. See the uh, fit in there that's supposed to have a pipe on it? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Here's a new bit of pipe. So, That I do believe goes that way round. Um, Grumpy Grandad couldn't get it on, so uh, I'm gonna have a go myself. You hear some cuss words and swearing. Please forgive me, I don't mean it. I gotta remember how this goes down there. Down there like so. Behind that other pipe. I'm gonna lay down on the floor now and just try and uh, oh, put it on. Come on pipe, where are you? <laughs> no grumpy granddad's got loads of torches and he keeps taking them all with him. <laughs> that is proper bloody tight on there. You can't get your whole hand in there to uh, yank it back. I'm nearly there. Very nearly on. I just can't get my arm up. Sorry about the grunting. Ah! God, Jesus, that is tight. The other one was kind of made for the job. This one seems like it's not made for the job at all. See my predicament? Look at the bottom one, mate. Pulling the bottom one off. Look at that, how are you supposed to join them two pipes together? That's pulling that one off as I pull the top one on. That doesn't work in my eyes. So folks, I took the pipes apart. And uh, as you can see, they don't make a lot of sense. And no wonder it don't fit, look. It's a whole hole out. Whichever way you want to look at it, put it that way around. There you go, look. That's why it's too short. So, we got the wrong pipe. We must have the wrong pipe. Bugger. So, here's what we're going to do. 
uh, I just uh, made a band-aid out of some silicon and some sticky tape. So I am a genius if I do say so myself. And we'll go back to fixing. Right, let me shoot that down there. And we'll see if the makeshift fix has worked, even if it's just worked for a couple of days while we wait for the other pipe. But look at that, look, it goes on. Oh my God, beautiful. All right, where's the pipe, where's the pipe? Come on, pipe, go in your hole. Uh, oh, come on. There we go. And I'm just gonna have to do that up. Right, gonna have to fill this puppy up with water. I'm just gonna fill it up with water for, for now and, uh, and see if it leaks and I'll make sure it's in the, in the dry undercover handy dandy little funnel. Let's fire this little puppy up and see if it takes a bit more water better. Don't hold a lot of water. I bet I've only put a couple of litres in there. My funnel is next to useless. Right, so I am going to try and get a couple of little old tractors moved. I'm going to get the forklift moved as well and just try and tidy up in the shed so I've got space to put my little tractors in the shed under cover with a sheet over them. I can get my digger out. I'm going to get the drill out. Uh, I can put that under cover in another shed. Uh, frozen tomorrow, I'm going to clear some trees up, I think. Um, clear some trees up and I've only got a bit of ditching to do so you lot see the F-35s or F-15s flying over yeah that's them probably F-15s because the F-35s they were talking about grounding them I thought they've grounded one lot of them anyway the vertical takeoff ones yeah just seen Farmer Luke on ITV News Farmer Luke does a good job on TikTok goes around schools and everything Amazing work, bigging up us farmers. We're all getting bored of growing food, guys. Pretty good year this year, um, with wheat prices being like around the 280, 330 pound a ton, depending on when you sold. But that that's coming down fast now. And uh, if it comes down much more, then that's the profit gone out of the job, you know? So he wasn't specifically talking about wheat, he was talking about potatoes. I don't know if you lot can see me now, sorry. I've got no daylight. Like the Blair Witch Project only uglier. Potatoes, they're taking all the all the CIPC and stuff that's totally harmless to everyone. They're taking that away from us, but they're still using it in France. And the chip shops are making somewhere around 100 quid a bag. If they're paying a tenner a bag and they're getting 50 portions of chips, that's 100 quid, all right? That's not all profit, it's a tenner, a tenner for the bag of spuds. So who's making all the money out of uh, a bag of potatoes? And it, uh, yeah, again, it's not the farmer. The bloke who does all the hard work and puts all the effort into growing food, still not getting all the money. Farmers want to grow food, but farmers want to grow food for money. That's why we do it at the end of the day. The amount of effort, and I mean, it's seven o'clock or half past seven at night now, and I'm still out here just because I ain't got around to doing stuff, you know? So things keep cropping up. The sprayer's now gone wrong, so I've got that to fix as well. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I love my job and I don't like moaning about it. But I want to make some decent money, you know? For the amount of hours we do, Trying not to uh, jiggle the jiggle the camera around too much. Can you, yeah, can you see me okay? Probably not. We. I have got some took to move. That's some sweeping up to do. I got some old uh, Diablos, some some bells, some whatever you want to call them, off the front of a potato harvester. I think they're off an old Amac. See if they go around. Oh, look at that. They're off an old email, guys, so if anyone wants them, throw me some money and uh, you can come and get them. They are for sale. I don't know what you do, whether you get through because they wear out. I can imagine some people wear these things down as quick as anything. Yeah, they're like, well, I'd say they're like new. There's a couple of dents in there, but nothing major. And they should be around, no trouble at all, look. I am for now just going to get him out of this shed so I can sleep up and uh, start tidying up with some wood and stuff that can all come out. And then I'll get two tractors back in. That's what I'm on. Right. Just about enough room to get a little grey fergie and a little Anna Sharma's in there, I reckon. So today I'm just going to go and have a little bonfire and then I might get on and just clear some trees up. I've got a load of trees and a load of ditching work to do so 
I might just get on with that. But at the minute, I feel like sitting in a shed and not doing anything. Yeah, Georgia being a farm and working outdoors, eh? I'm gonna get all these dead boxes and stuff. Then I'm just gonna get them cleaned out and burnt. Rummy Granddad, I think, is gonna get some irrigator pumps undercover. I've got to put a bit of tape on the heater as well, because look, there's a, there's a vent there broken. And all that does is let all the heat out there. And I want it on the windscreen. Okay. Obviously, you've got to let the puppies out. Who's a good puppy? Who's a good puppy? Who's a good puppy? And then I got the sprayer to fix as well now, which is a great. So, hopefully, I've got some new lights coming for the combine as well. Seems it's frozen out here. I thought I'd come and clear some trees up. And then, seems I found a big tree in the bottom of the dike. I managed to get my little green number stuck. We are a stuck. So uh, I can't I can't wriggle myself out. Oh, hang on a minute. Got leading away. Yeah, I'm stuck. So uh, grumpy granddad's even more grumpy now because he's got to come and pull me out. So I know, I know, I don't never get stuck very often. Um, but yeah, no, I just can't get no grip to get back out. <coughs> oh. But yeah, this is a part of our uh, water management system. Basically, we just uh, when every five years we go around and trim all the trees and bushes out and uh, and then obviously we leave them to grow up again for the next five years for habitat for the wildlife um, these trees and stuff are all coming over look um, not gonna be long before some of them are on my field anyway that's not my field um, but the ones that have fallen out are starting to regrow look so it's a cycle of life I want the trees there because they protect my soil from uh, erosion uh, wind erosion stuff like that you know um, they are pretty close I think I'll probably pull them down with the digger when the digger comes along here <coughs> um, but yeah as you can see these trees are lovely uh, they do a good job of stopping all the wind and everything and I guarantee you in this bit of the field these 30 40 yards is a lot higher because the soil's still here the rest of it that's been attacked by the wind will disappear so yeah, we've got the fieldsman coming out from British Sugar to have a look at our sugar beet. My cousin Martin next door has had some sugar beet lifted over there and they've all been rejected. So, um, yeah, as you can see, the other bonus about me doing, obviously I'm going to have to bring the, uh, the old Hitachi down here and, and clean this dike out. But you can see how wild it gets. And if you don't keep these dikes clean, guys, then everything floods as simple as that uh, beavers are not a good idea I mean I like a little beaver but not on uh, not on my land or in anywhere near my rivers so um, yeah what a beautiful day grumpy granddad's just blowing a tire up on a trailer and um, yeah so the other bonus about having these trees falling down is I got some wood to chop up so I get these trees chopped up I mean it's not very good wood but it is wood and it's free and when them trees grow up again uh maybe my children or nieces will uh will chop the wood up um cycle of life i mean they're trying to steer you away from chopping wood up but that ain't gonna happen that ain't gonna happen at all people want their open fire they want cheap fuel they want they don't want to be paying a fortune for all these ground source heat pumps and stuff that are supposed to save you thousands um then you can just put a log burner in that doesn't cost you thousands. We'll wait till Grumpy Granddad gets here, and then he, I'll, um, I'll film you. Uh, I'll film me getting pulled out. I was going to say getting pulled off then, but this is for kids and families, so I won't. So I'll just sit and wait. Might actually turn the truck, uh, the loader back on though, because uh, he's getting mighty nippy in it without the heater on. <laughs> I got a big old log in there. I'll see if I can pick it up while Grumpy Granddad's on the back of me and we'll see if we can pull it out so uh it'll all be quite interesting <laughs> to say the least i am perched on the side of a dike so while he's not here i'll um i'll have a wee stop a toilet break and uh and i'll catch you guys in a minute cheers right my night in china armor has uh just arrived and <laughs> here we go gonna pull me out pull me off <laughs> Giddy. That was easy. 
Ta-da! I ain't got no traction! There we go, I am unstuck now. That's the first time I've actually been stuck on this channel, isn't it? I think. Other friends of mine have been stuck, but they didn't want me recording. My cousin got stuck. He didn't want me recording. Always a first, isn't it? So yeah, we just, uh, like I say, these, all these trees and stuff. I like to, I like to mow once round my field. I always like to mow like one time round the field, uh, but. I don't like mowing down the side of the banks and stuff like that. I just like to let, them, let it all grow wild. Good for the wildlife, good for conservation and everything. So um, yeah, it's pointless destroying as much habitat as I can just because it looks pretty. I'm trying to do as little tillage as I can with the um, with the with the sub uh, with the cultivation. You know, just um, trying to do my bit for the environment. I mean, it, the land hasn't been intensively farmed, and it still is intensively farmed, but. Um, you, you can work with nature as well so we'll figure out what we want to do and uh, say I'd like a bird of stat with a packer on and then three rows of di uh, drilling discs and then the packer on the back of that so I don't move any soil around as such just uh, just needs a subsoiler on the front of it that's the only thing like a miniature subsoiler obviously you know what I've got already so Got another tree here, I found another tree. Let me leave that there. You lot can see what I'm doing a little bit, maybe. I ain't putting the camera outside today because it's too bloody cold. I don't think really these GoPros like it very much. And obviously the 360 will come along here. GoPro's not liking the cold weather already, so. The, um, the 360 is gonna come along here and have a proper good clean out, and then we'll have another tidy up the trees and stuff, but. At least if I can get this done in this frosty weather, that's something, isn't it? Nom, 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 nom. Hey, here we go. So we do like a bit of deforestation in the front here. <laughs> I might have found myself a big stick. Let's see if we can squeeze past the old 6610 and put this with the other logs and then I'll just come and chop all these logs up and split them and store them and uh, jobs are good. So the JCB, the reason why I'm not using the JCB today is because it's at the other farm and I, just, I really couldn't be bothered to go and get it. So here I am in uh, Old Faithful. She's doing a good a job as any. So three big logs there. That'll all chop up. Good bit of wood there. Complete. See if we can pick this pile of rubbish up and put it in the trailer while we're at it. There we got it. A lot far easier to clear everything up in one hit than it is to clear it up and then clear it up again. But I suppose the good thing is that I move it out all in piles and stuff, I can just come and get it now as I want it. Now, Grumpy Granddad's been and pulled me out. So, I still have got a massive tree down inside the dike. Huge, great tree. I don't know whether I'll get any of this out. Yeah, what? That is a job for the 360. It's so much easier when you can just get them sawn straight off by Russell with his saw blade, R.E. Smith, get him to do the saw blade work and then it leaves them all clean. So he's been along. That's all I want to do is just trim them back so the dead ones can come out and the ones that are half falling over can come out and yeah, it leaves it so much neater for me to uh, get in there with a the 360 then. Having learned my lesson a minute ago, I'm not going to try too hard. Oh, I've got some of them. Yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. Hoorah! 
I won't try too hard with the trailer work either because I've only got to go half a mile over the field and then I'm at where I'm tipping it and set fire to it so there really ain't no point in getting down there and getting the trailer stuck or all this wood and stuff stuck in the trailer it'd be stupid lots of nice little loads have another little poke in here Another load of thatch coming out of there. The only trouble, you want like a 50 ton trailer to put all these bits of wood in because it just fills the trailer up as quick as anything. And have another little dig out of here. I am getting there, I'm nearly done. So what I might do now is just uh, scoop it all out of the dike, get myself all cleaned out. Get it all in a pile here and then pick it up with one lump. That ain't one big bit, is it? It's pointless me travelling back to the trailer for that. There we go. Well, we go. Uh, what we got here then? It looks like we might have ourselves another tree. Let's see if we can get this one out without getting stuck, shall we? Come here. Obviously, the JCB's got more reach and it's more powerful, got heavier lift, and. Um, and everything but Grumpy Grandad seems to be able to drive everywhere on the field apart from around the outside or down the sprayer wheeling. Then me talking about going towards controlled traffic farming and direct drilling and stuff like that and then you got Grumpy Grandad who drives wherever he feels like it. So um, anybody else's uh, family members do that? His field, so I'm just trying to help him out with some easy uh, low cost drilling. But uh, we're getting there now, folks. We are getting there now. Dad's going to go get the... Grumpy Granddad's going to go get the, uh, the 360 because that would be a better tool, I think, from this loader. All I'm doing is just uh, tickling around the outside of it, you know? Not getting everything out of the bottom of the dike, so... I'm, uh, I'm working hard anyway. I don't know if you lot can see that behind me. Yeah, probably not. We're getting there. We're getting there. So, um... Yeah, like I say, I wanted to. I found a sprayer wheel in to go down to our little fire pit that we have and uh, just trundle up the sprayer wheel in because that'll be in the same place as last year. Grumpy Granddad just gone straight across the field, just diagonally across the field. I'm going here, and that's where I'm going, Bowie. But I am getting a lot of, well, a fair old bit of this stuff out. I mean, he's. I'll just keep heaping it up now and then push it out into the field. What a glorious day! I love it when it's frozen all day and the sun's out. It's delightful. 
why we work outdoors, isn't it? So I'll come and do some ditching tomorrow while Grumpy Grandad's shooting. Otherwise we'll end up with a trench where I'm not supposed to have a trench and then he'll be moaning because the dikes have not been mowed. Um, and you can do some, you can ditch the dikes out without mowing the dikes. You just have to uh, be careful, take your time. And um, it really is as simple as that. It, you can do it, it's just uh, you can't see very well. And he just old fashioned, it will not change for the love of money. You know, I've got to have the, I've got to have the dike mowed out so I can see what I'm doing. Well, I managed to do all the dikes out last year without mowing any of them, and it was fine. So, you know, it really is pretty simple. Um, plus then you're not taking away the habitat for all the animals, are you? So, my little heat there. Yeah, sorry about the buzzer. I mean, it's not, it's not getting hot yet, but I wish I could take it out and throw it away. While they got the boom extended on this thing, it beats at you all day long. It does drive you a bit mad, but you get used to it and uh, just don't pay any attention to it. So, see what I mean? It's a bit irritating. I'm, I'm used to it, so uh, I don't really care. I just I'm used to it, so it's not not annoying me. But it might be annoying you lot. Beep, 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 beep. Why well, I put you on a uh, time lapse earlier, so you didn't have to listen. To it. Didn't have to put up with all that. Poor old John Deere with 11,000 hours. Oh, 10,492. Right, put my phone down. Crack on. Time is money. So I was hoping to do some drilling this next few days, but I mean my cousin has been out there for the last two days cultivating his land, getting it round to a seabed, and uh, my seabed's already there, you know, I ain't got to move it around as much as that. I've tried to go straight in, so hopefully like at the end of the week it stops being frozen and uh, not rainy, and then I can get on with get on with my drilling. But while I can't, I might as well make use of my time, might I? Literally not picking anything out now. I just got one little twig out of the dive, well that ain't worth it. I got it though, I got it. There you go, more twigs. Good scoop that time. Yeah, I'm just gonna go along now, I think, and just get the big bits out. All the bits I can reach. Failing that, I'm just pushing the other bit further back in the dike, so... Uh, Grumpy Grandad's gonna go and sort the digger out. Yeah, there's a little bit. Yeah, what does everybody else do while it's frozen like this? What are you all up to? Let me know. Let me... Just trying to make myself a job, I think. Trying to job create, trying to look busy while it's cold outside and sit in the wharf. Uh, not desperate to do this stuff, but I did. Tried to pick a big old tree up, but didn't get none of it. No, I am wasting my time here because the branches have all fell straight. Every time I go to pick them up, I uh, just end up breaking them. A couple more bits, big bits and all. I know, and that's the other thing. I hope it's like this at the weekend when uh, when it's shooting time. I haven't really had a good day shooting this year. I mean, I ain't that fussed about shooting. I just like going and hanging out with my friends, family. Um, and I haven't really got going this year. I haven't really had a proper day where I've sat down and had a proper meal afterwards and had a skin full of beer with many people. Such is what we do. We don't do things for halves. Not that I really fancy too much beer to be honest. I had enough with Zoe and how's it the weekend? How's everyone's sugar beet? I think I may have asked you this already, but I mean, I think I've got sugar beet clean and odors going past now, if you can see. See him on the road. People uh, go into different fields trying to find any sort of decent sugar beet. So uh, uh, I still got to get them lifted. I can't leave them in the field. They'll poison the field. Yeah, I, I'd imagine some people that haven't haven't lifted any sugar beet. Some people probably haven't lifted any sugar beet, or they've only just lifted a few bits. And they must be kicking themselves fairly now for not being quicker on the jump, but. I like to try and get my sugar beet lifted and out of the way, done, finished by the end of October. Uh, I know they bulk up a lot in October for us. If, we, if we've had a bad year for growing season or whatever like we did this year, then they bulk up massively in September and October, especially being as warm as it was. Mine, mine will keep bulking up right through to November if I want, but if 
thing is, I want I want the fields almost. So uh, I, I, I try and get them lifted as, as quick as I can, uh, rather than have to worry about paddling around in in the crap. You know, and, and the good thing is with my land as well, we can still keep lifting pretty well in the frost. Frost, the ground doesn't get that hard. It's just if the if the sugar beet harvester can clean them up. I mean, minus 10s the other day, minus 11 probably wouldn't lift sugar beet, but. You know, minus ones and twos and threes and fours like we got now, it's not too bad. Don't make a mess, do you? That was great, wasn't it? Nearly four o'clock. Uh, just had the fieldsman from British Sugar around and yeah, it's not good. I made my quota. If I hadn't made my quota then it could have been different, but yeah, they normally come around and buy the sugar beet off you anyway and put it in their AD plant or whatever and it, it's all frozen. Basically, the sugar beet's all frozen, so as soon as you start lifting it, it just starts melting in the heap and uh, we've just been chopping some up and chopping some open. Uh, fieldsman Richard, he didn't want to be on camera, which is understandable. Yeah, basically just because we've filled our quota anyway, I've still got maybe 10 acres of sugar beet in the ground. Maybe quite a lot of tonnage, really. So yeah, now I need to find a home for that. It's still in the ground. I'm going to leave it in the ground until uh, until I find a home for it. And my uh, haulier can haul it to someone who's going to pay £10 a ton if I'm lucky, plus haulage. So yeah, yeah. good thing is I made my quota anyway. So I'm already, I'm already up on my contract. My cousin's 100 tonnes short or 80 tonnes short, I think, on his contract, but they're trying to get some into the sugar beet factory and uh, they, they keep rejecting them. So he managed to take three loads in and, and one load snuck through, but yeah, I, I'd imagine the sugar beet factory are now uh, inundated with um, every man and his dog sending in frozen sugar beets. So yeah, bugger. Um, yeah, I knew, I knew the frost wasn't going to be great for the sugar beet, but with the amount of top that we had on there, I thought I thought we might have got away with it. I mean, we've got away with it in other years, but minus 10s and 11s, you can't expect the sugar beet to survive that, really, without getting frosted. So, just got to try and find some of an AD plant, I think, and uh, see if they'll take it. We shall see. Watch this space. I'll keep you updated. That is it for today, folks. That is a wrap. I managed to clear up quite a bit of wood. We'll get the uh, 360 fired up. I am going to come back out tonight and get the pistons out of the uh, Alice. And get that done. Poor old John Leonor. She's still good for a day's work. I don't mind sitting in this old clunker. If you like today's video, guys, make sure you check it out. Our other videos. Make sure you give us a like and subscribe. And uh, if you feel like supporting our channel, there's a link in the description below. Can't thank you all enough. Cheers guys!